From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Jet Marsh, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, I've been waiting for you to call. The forest ranger come down to my cabin and said you was calling from one of the emergency phones. Figured it must be kind of important to you. It is, Jed. I'm at the fire patrol phone a mile below Primrose Camp, the Summit Road. Can you meet me here? This time of night, four mile across the ridge on foot. Well, you're a woodsman, aren't you? That's what you told me this afternoon. Well, I didn't feel... I just met the Bardells. You're a longtime friend of theirs, aren't you? Something wrong at Pops, please? I think there's something badly wrong. He and his wife are scared half to death for some reason. I haven't seen the daughter, and Pop and his wife have each told me a different story about her. That don't sound like them at all. Well, they're obviously under some kind of pressure. That so-called nephew seems to be running the show. I told you, Pop ain't got no nephew. He has now, Jed. You got any idea what's behind it, Mr. Dollar? Yes. I think it's tied in with a $100,000 payroll robbery, that wrecked car we found this afternoon, three murders, and... You'd better meet me up here as soon as you can. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Primrose Camp, Arizona to the home office, Mid-States Industrial Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Primrose Matter. Expense account continued. Jed Marsh, an old-time prospector, was a good friend of the Bardells, operators of the lonely tourist camp on a dead-end road high up in the Santa Rita Mountains. And I counted on that friendship to sway him. It did. He finally agreed to come. I hung up the Ranger Patrol phone and sat down on a flat pine stump to wait for him. And I hoped it wouldn't be too long a wait. The night wind sang in the high branches overhead, and their shadows in the moonlight formed strange moving patterns of silver and black. It wasn't a good night for a jumpy imagination. I started to reach for a cigarette and matches. Get your hands up! He was behind me, and I couldn't see him. But I knew the voice. It was Pop Bardell's mysterious nephew. Get him up! Move! You're up late. So are you. Now, just keep it there now. We'll see if you got it. Uh-huh. I figured you'd be packing a rod. Self-protection. I understand there are a lot of snakes around here. Maybe you understand too much, Dollar. I suppose you followed me from the camp. You're a good supposer. Now, what's the game? Well, I'm a bird watcher, and I specialize in observing the quaint habits of the night-flying titmouse. <laughs> I want jokes. I'll tell you I want jokes. I... I guess I misunderstood you. Right, get up. Get up. You're not hurt. Uh, I appreciate you telling me. I asked you a question, Dollar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the game. You heard that phone conversation, didn't you? I heard it. And you know Who's about the guy you talked to? A friend of mine. An old prospector named Jed Marsh. I heard that. Why'd you get in touch with him? Well, now, he specializes in night-blooming uranium, so I thought we might combine our hobbies. Now, how much of this does it take to wise you up? Well, I, I, I think that one just might have done it. Why'd you want him to meet you here? I thought he might be useful. For what? For pointing out the roosting places of the night flying. All right, take it easy. Slap me once more with that rod and I may get mad. You're scaring me to death. There are worse ways to go. Dollar. Them smart cracks are going to get you nothing but stitches. Stitches are what they're supposed to keep you Just on. keep asking. Relax, for... relax, relax. You know, I think I finally got you tagged. Now, what do you mean, tagged? You're not Pop Bardell's nephew, and you don't come from Tulsa. Am I right so far? You're doing the talking. I think you came originally from Chicago or New York. But recently, you just come west from Kansas City. You a cop, Dollar? No. Then how come you... I've been trying to place you ever since I saw you this afternoon. Thinking back over police bulletins I've seen, mug shots, descriptions. Yeah. You're Spade Keller, aren't you? Go on, this is your story. You used to work with the Karzati mob. Then you went out of circulation for three years as a guest of the state. And when you got out, you apparently hooked up with Jipper Nitson and his gang. So you are a cop. Well, mister... I'm somebody who found that stolen car you ran off the cliff and tried to hide under a rock slide. If you found it, you must have been looking for it. I was looking for $100,000, that Kansas City payroll. 
The one you boys killed a couple of bank guards to get your hands on, remember? I'm just listening. Then, of course, you killed a state trooper down there at the highway when you crashed a roadblock. That's three murders, Spade. And nobody left now to pay for them but just you and the jipper. You know, they got to catch us first. Oh, they will. Or kill you trying to. If the cops don't do no better than you did, the... Hey, Dollar. The cops know about that car? Which car is that, Spade? You know which car. The one we buried in the rock slide. There's the ranger phone. Call him up and ask him. Maybe they'll be happy... <laughs> you just keep it up, Dollar. This gun will still be in good shape when your head's got holes in it. I think maybe it's already happened. Now, what about it? You told the police about that car? You followed me, didn't you? You know I only made one call. Yeah, but you might have called him earlier. <sighs> Wouldn't that be kind of crazy? Then they'd get the hundred grand. You mean you... <sighs> so that's the game, huh? You and this pal of yours were figuring to knock us over and hijack that payroll for yourself. I didn't say that. I figured you for a phony the minute you drove into the station this afternoon. That's why I had Bardell give you a cabin when you came back, and that's why I took a wheel off your car tonight. So I could have you or I could keep my good eye on you. See what you were up to. And now you think you know. Sure. You got a hunch we'd be holed up in here somewhere after we broke through that roadblock in the Nogales Highway. So you come up to snoop around and try to get your hands on that hundred thousand. Spade, you're a real smart boy. You found the car and then you tagged me. So you figured Primrose Camp for the hideout. How did the Bardells figure in it, Spade? And you sneaked down here tonight and phoned your pal, wanted him to come over to the camp and help you. Help you what, Dollar? You don't know where Jipper is, and you don't know where the money is. Now, what were you planning to do? I thought we might ask you. Yeah, I'll bet you did. Only it didn't work. No, it didn't work. Well, now there's nothing to do but just sit here and wait for your pal to show. And to make sure you wait, try it! So I waited quietly. Being somewhat unconscious, there wasn't much else I could do. I'd been trying to stall Spade until Jed Marsh arrived, hoping to tip Jed off in some way before he walked into the trap. But I'd been outfoxed, outmaneuvered, and finally just plain out. For how long, I don't know. But it was too long to do Jed any good. When I came to, he was already in the parlor and the spider had pounced. What do you mean, get my hands up? You heard me, didn't you? You done right, I heard you, but I... You ain't Mr. Dollar. What's going on here? Who the devil are you, anyhow? That you like a bullet right over your belt buckle. Now, you look here. Easy, Jed. Better do what he says. Mr. Dollar, what happened to you? The same thing that's going to happen to you if you don't get your hands up. What are you worried about, Spade? He's not even packing a gun. I suppose I make sure of that, huh? You're golden lucky I ain't got no gun, you shifty-eyed little sidewinder. Shut up. If I had one, I'd fill you so gall dang full of holes they would... <laughs> you shoot! You hurt, Jen. <laughs> not as bad as he'll be when I pay him back for that. Get over there next to Dollar. Come on, snap it up! Uh, I'm mighty glad there's a moon tonight. I want to get that face of yours real clear in my mind so as I'll know it next time I see it. So I, I told you to shut up. Better relax, Jud. Spade here is pretty jumpy. He's one of the last two left now, and he knows it's just a matter of time. What I got to do, Dollar, smash that head of yours clear open? I think you'd better go easy on that slugging stuff, Spade. About the next time you swing on one of us, the other one's going to jump you. I... I was wondering if you had the same idea I had, Mr. Dollar. Either one of you makes a move, it'll be your last one. You see, Jen, he's jumpy. He and the chipper are up at Dead End Road. They got no place to go from here, and Spade knows it. A couple more days, they'll figure we got clear away from this part of the country. They won't be looking for us around here. That's when we'll leave, and we'll get away with it. Provided Jed and I don't tell him where you are. You won't. That's one thing I'm real sure of. This here varmint wouldn't be aiming to drew us in, would he, Mr. Dollar? I wouldn't be surprised if he had something like that in mind, Jed. Am I right, Spade? What have I got to lose? That's a very logical attitude. What he means, Jed, is the fact that the gang has already murdered three people. And since they can only hang Spade and the Jipper once, a couple of more killings won't matter very much. It matters some to me, seeing as I'm the big one of them. Oh, yeah, and to me, seeing as I'm the other... But that's Spade's problem, of course. Having two of us on his hands. Even with him having the gun, it's pretty touchy business. Right, Spade? Get on your feet, Dollar. Sure. 
We'll stay as far apart as he'll stand for, Jed, so he'll have to swing the gun wide. Shut up, Dollar. If he goes for me first, jump him fast. Sure, I got you. Seen it happen once in Tonopah during a gold strike in 19... Shut up to both of you! Now, Spade's got an even worse problem, Jed. He's so scared and jumpy, he may even miss his first shot. Then he'll have both of us on him. You reckon I'd be jumpy, too, if I was standing there where he is. What are you talking about? Next to the edge of the cliff that way, close to all them boulders. What about them? Just snakes, that's all. Snakes? Oh, you shouldn't have told him, Jed. I was hoping he'd blunder onto one. Where's any snakes? Might be anywhere around you there. Along for sunup, when it starts getting chilly, they crawl in around the rocks and get warm. You city fellas ought to have a nurse to keep... Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute. I wouldn't move around much if I was you. Not without a flashlight. I haven't got a flashlight. Well, I have, right here in my pocket. Now, if I... Hold it! Keep your hands up. I've seen that trick pulled before. You throw the light in my eyes to give Dollar a chance to jump me. My, you've got a real suspicious nature, Spade. Snakes. There's probably no snakes within ten miles. What's that? Look out, Spade. Where? The other way. It's right there by your foot. Move back. Let me get the flash. I can't see what I'm... Not that way, Spade. You're going to step on it. No, no. Jump back. Jump back. Which way? Look out, the cliff. You're going Ah! on the edge. Ah! He stepped back on that loose slab on the edge, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. Well, it was sure his last step, Jed. That must be a 400-foot drop there. I didn't aim for this to happen. I was just trying to upset him so as we could jump him. How'd you make that noise, anyway? With this. A set of old timber snake rattles stuck on a pine sliver. You just rub your thumb on it, and it starts them going. Use it sometimes to spook a tenderfoot. Are you sure spook one tonight? Can't say I'm too sorry at that, Mr. Dollar. He wasn't aiming no good for us, and that's for dang sure. Three down now. Only the jipper himself is left. Funny about life sometimes, Mr. Dollar. That spade fellow went around striking out at people like a snake does. And he died the same darn way. All smashed on the rocks. Just like a snake dies. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a lovely girl screams in terror as a cornered rat turns and fights back. Fights the way a rat fights. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>